target is focused on project management professionalism. As we discussed in one of the introductory nuggets in preparing for the PMP exam, there will be a number of questions on the exam itself directly focused on project management and professionalism. So what is the definition of project management professionalism? It is defined in the PMI Code of Conduct. The PMI Code of Conduct is available from their website at www.pmi.org. I have downloaded a copy of that, and let's have a very quick look at it to introduce this nugget. This code of conduct is something you will be agreeing to and signing your name to that you will agree to this code of conduct when you apply for and when you obtain your PMP certification. It's broken down into two main areas. You have responsibility to the profession, and within the responsibility of the profession, you need to comply with all organizational rules and policies. You have specific candidate and certification professional practices that you need to apply by. You have policies for advancement of the profession. You have responsibilities to customers and the public. You need to ensure you are properly representing your qualifications, your experience, and your services when you are working with the public. You are responsible for ensuring you are managing conflict of interest situations and other prohibitive professional conduct, i.e. you are behaving professionally in accordance with the PMI Code of Conduct. So again, you're encouraged to download, review, and understand the Code of Conduct. In this nugget, we will review in more detail what that Code of Conduct means and what type of actions will be expected from you as a project management professional. So what does the code of conduct really mean? I've tried to translate the code of conduct into more English, more understandable terms, and I believe it boils down to these six main things. Do the right things. Follow the right processes. Act ethically. Be a professional, avoid conflicts of interest, and report violations. So what does doing the right things mean? It means ensuring the actions that you're taking are for the betterment of your project, are for the betterment of your organization, and are for the betterment of yourself as a professional. And it's really doing those things in that order. As a project management professional, you are responsible for ensuring your project is successfully delivered. So you do the right things for the betterment of your project. Because you are part of an organizational entity, the next step is doing the right things for the betterment of your organization. And sometimes, without getting into conflict of interest, sometimes there will be subtle conflicts between is this the right action to take for my project? Does taking this right action for my project cause a less than optimal solution for my organization? Or should I be taking the right action for my organization, realizing that it may cause some subtle issues for your project? As defined by the PMI Code of Conduct, when you have those conflict situations, when there is a potential for conflict between the project and the organization, you need to review that issue with your advisor, with your acceptor, with your management to ensure that you are doing the right thing, that you aren't putting your project ahead of the organization or that you aren't putting the organization ahead of the project. So again, doing the right things means taking things up the, the organizational chain, the responsibility chain, to ensure that you are, in fact, doing the right things. And then finally, the last part of doing the right things is doing the right things that you are advancing yourself as a professional, as a project management professional. The next step, really much more straightforward, is to follow the right processes. What are the right processes? The PMBOK. All of the steps that we've defined in this Nugget series, initiating, planning, executing, 
monitoring and controlling, and closing. Those are the right steps as defined by the PEMBOK guide. Scope management, time management, cost management, quality management, communications management, human resources management, risk management, project integration, those are the right processes. If you are managing and delivering your project as defined in the PEMBOK guide, you are following the right processes. You need to act ethically. We need to perform, we need to behave properly within the ethical environment as defined by our organization and within the ethical environment as defined by the, the country in which we operate. And I specifically make reference to country. Different countries have different laws, different rules, different regulations. So as a project management professional, if you are working internationally, you need to be very aware of the difference in ethics between different companies. And I've heard rumor of, and I'm not sure that this is true, that one of the questions on the PMP exam is, you are working in a foreign country and you are advised by a senior official in the company that in order for your co company, you are doing this on a competitive bid situation, in order for your company's bid to be considered for evaluation by the company, you need to include an extra check per se for X dollars as a quote unquote bribe to ensure that your bid is evaluated. So the question is, what do you do? What is the ethical responsibility? Do you simply walk away and say, no, that's not ethical? Or do you speak to someone, understand the business environment in this international country that you're working in to determine if that is in fact an ethical practice in the country that you're working for. So again, as you're acting ethically, you need to ensure that you are following your own conscience, but that you are also following your own conscience as defined by the proper standards and procedures, proper operating practices within which the environment in which you are operating, the country standards, and so on. You need to be a professional. That's what getting the PMP is all about. It is a project management professional. You need to treat your profession, project management, with respect. You need to ensure that people recognize you as a professional. They look up to the project management profession, and they realize that project managers are going to ensure projects are delivered more successfully, that projects are going to ensure our companies are more successful. We need to avoid conflicts of interest. Simple conflicts of interest are, if I give you $100, if I give you a color TV as part of project procurement practices, will you ensure my company's bid is accepted? That's back to act, acting ethically. And here in North America, that would not be acting ethically. So that's avoiding a conflict of interest situation. But you can get into personal conflict of interest situations. You absolutely want to get involved with a project that's working in technology X. You know there's a new project starting up in technology X, but at this moment you're not available for it. Acting ethically means you do everything in your power to ensure your current project completes and that you miss your opportunity to work on technology X. Acting unethically means you find a way to get out of your current project. You either misrepresent the project and get the project canceled, or you convince someone that it's just not in, in the project's best interest for you to continue so that you can get removed from the project to follow your own personal goals of working in technology X. So you can have personal conflicts of interest that conflict with the project's best interests or the organizational best interests. You have to avoid that at all costs. And you need to report violations. You need to report to your company, to PMI, instances where you see people are violating good code of conduct. They are not performing ethically. They are taking illegal actions. They are using copyright material. They are violating intellectual property laws. 
whatever violations you are aware of as a project manager professional, it's your responsibility to ensure that these are reported to the appropriate bodies, senior management in your company, PMI, or in some instances, to local law authorities. This is a very serious, very complete code of conduct. When you become a PMP, you are expected to be a professional. You need to do the right things. You need to follow the right processes. You need to act ethically. I think it all sums up to you need to be a professional. You need to treat project management with a great deal of care, a great deal of respect, and ensure that you are furthering the best interests of project management and that everyone will respect project management on a go-forward basis. For the remainder of this Nugget series, I'm providing a little more detail on a few of those areas from the Code of Conduct that I think require a bit more attention. So the first of these is be honest. What does being honest mean? It means being honest in all communications. You are the prime source for information for your project. You know whether the project is on track. You know whether the project is on budget. You know whether the project is performing to scope specifications. So you need to be brutally honest in all communications, on status reports, on progress reports, on every piece of information you distribute to the stakeholders, to your acceptor, to senior management. You need to ensure that all communications, all status information for your project is brutally honest. You have true legal responsibilities for being honest. You need to protect copyrights and intellectual property. If your, if your project needs to use material that is copyrighted, that is intellectual property, if your project needs to use material that should be purchased, but you can beg, borrow, or steal, so to speak, you need to ensure that you're not beg, borrowing, and stealing material, that you are properly acquiring the rights, the licenses, the access to the material, the supplies, the services, protecting copyrights, intellectual property from the organizations that you're receiving the information from. We talked about this already. You need to put the project and the company before yourself. You need to be a project management professional to ensure that your actions on behalf of your project are furthering the best interests of the project and the company and when there's conflicts between project best interests and company best interests, you need to elevate that to the appropriate management stream to ensure that the actions for project and company are being taken appropriately. And as we saw right in the PMI Code of Conduct, we need to report violations. If we see people acting dishonestly, stealing, not acting within the Code of Conduct, we need to report violations to senior management in our company where appropriate, to PMI where appropriate, and to local law authorities where appropriate. Adhering to the PMBOK is a key component to the PMI code of conduct. What does adhering to the PMBOK mean? It has two main components. The PMBOK defines we need to produce specific documents. We need to produce a project charter. That project charter has specific sections that are defined, we need to ensure that our project charters satisfies the intent and purpose of the project charter from the PMBOK guide. We also need to ensure that our project charter is reviewed and signed off. The same goes for the project management plan. The project management plan will define the process for scope management, time management, cost management, quality management for all of the important areas for our project again as defined by the PMBOK guide. The PMBOK guide defines what should be in a project management plan and again we need to review and we need to ensure sign off for these and the other important documents as defined by the PMBOK guide. The project charter and the project management plan are not the only two documents defined in the PMBOK guide but they are probably the two most critical documents defined in the PMBOK guide that we need to adhere to as a PMP professional. And as discussed earlier, 
we need to follow the processes as defined in the PEMBOK guide, the five process areas, initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and closing. And within those five process areas, we need to ensure that we're satisfying the intents, the strategies defined by the nine knowledge areas, the scope, the time, the cost, the quality, the communications, the procurement, the risk, the human resources. The PEMBOK guide is a very well thought out, very well written, continuously reviewed and improved document defining the best practices for project management. The PEMBOK guide is your best guide to ensure you are following project management best practices. One of the requirements of the PMI Code of Conduct is to contribute to the project management knowledge base, to contribute to the project management best practices. On first blush, that often caused people a little concern. They say, well, I'm not a, a writer, I'm not an author, I'm not going to be going out creating textbooks, I'm not at a sufficient level that I'm going to get involved with PMI and actively work on the next edition of the PMBOK guide. That's fine, that's not necessarily what it means. Contributing to the project management knowledge base can be as simple as doing proper project closing, sharing the lessons learned from your project within the company. Have a lunch and learn, have a brown bag lunch. At the end of your project, invite all of your peers, all of your fellow project managers together and say, at the end of this project, here's what I learned. Here's what I would do differently. Here's what I would repeat. Here's how I think we can become better project managers within our company. That's contributing to the project management knowledge base. Another very practical process you can do is to develop a best practices repository within your organization. Find a land drive, a shared drive on a network somewhere, and start to populate it with your lessons learned. Start to populate it with templates and sample deliverables from your project that you deem to be of high quality that have value on a go forward basis. That's contributing to the project management knowledge base. Another aspect is mentoring and coaching junior project managers in your company. New hires need support. You can contribute to the project management knowledge base by being a mentor and a coach to the junior project managers. So these three aspects, very easy to do to satisfy the, the PMI code of conduct and really are following, again, the established practices as defined by the PMBOK guide for part of project closing. On a more grand basis, yeah, you can get involved internationally and you can start to write articles and you can start to contribute to PMI itself. When you join PMI, you will get a, a monthly uh, magazine, the PMI Handbook Network, I believe it's called. They absolutely welcome articles and contributions from readers, from fellow PMI members. That's an excellent way to contribute to the project management knowledge base. Or one that I've done is to volunteer on PMI committees. You do not have to be an internationally refined guru to participate on PMI committees. PMI committees work effectively because they have members from all walks of life. They have junior project managers, they have senior project managers. They have internationally recognized experts. They have experts from North America, they have experts from Asia, they have experts from all over the world. And that what makes the PMI committees work so effectively. So again, if you're interested in getting involved in the project management knowledge base more widespread than within your company, consider volunteering on PMI committees. Again, go to www.pmi.org and look and see what committees are open, what committees are working in areas that interest you, and volunteer. It can be very enlightening and very rewarding. A key aspect of PMP certification is that it requires continuous personal improvement. Beyond the initial qualifications of the number of hours and the number of educational experiences that you must have to qualify to, to write the PMP, you must also provide to PMI evidence that you are providing or you are engaged in continuous personal improvement. You must provide to PMI on an ongoing basis proof that you are continuing to be involved in, continuing to be an active in, 
and continuing to improve your personal project management processes. That is critical for ongoing project management certification. If you don't provide that evidence, your PMP will expire and you will no longer be PMP certified. How do you do all of that? An excellent source is to attend your local PMI chapter meetings. I'm assuming by now, if you haven't already, you will be joining your local PMI chapter. Most PMI chapters, I believe all PMI chapters, have regular monthly or regularly scheduled meetings where they always have very informative uh, educational guest speakers. That is part of your continuous process improvement. Go to the meetings, network, learn from your peers, and learn from the presenters in the meetings. PMI offers a very wide range of seminars internationally, excellent seminars with excellent content, another great way to continu for continuous personal improvement, or attain other seminars, non-PMI based, but focused on project management. Again, part of continual process improvement. We can never get too good at project management. And of course, there's self-education. Read, or in this case, listen and learn. There is lots of material available on the web, in the bookstores, to help you continuously improve and refine your project management best practices. Continuous process improvement is not just necessary for personal enrichment, it is in fact a requirement for PMP certification. You will have to provide back to PMI on a regular basis proof that you are engaged in personal, continuous personal improvement to maintain your PMP certification. The final aspect to project management professionalism is we need to support our project stakeholders. Where appropriate, I want to underline appropriate a couple of times, where appropriate, stakeholder needs come first. What do I mean by that? Again, within the confines of project management professionalism, where appropriate, the stakeholder's needs come first. If the stakeholders ask you to do something unethical, inappropriate. You're not going to do that. If the stakeholders ask you to um, violate the principles of the project, unethical. If the stakeholders ask you to say, well, we really don't need a project management plan, let's get started, that's inappropriate. So we have a number of ethics, we have a number of guidelines that we've discussed in this nugget so far that define what is appropriate and what is inappropriate. But where appropriate, within the confines of what we've discussed in this nugget, if the stakeholder needs something done, if the stakeholder needs to change the scope of the project, if the stakeholder needs to accelerate the project, you need to do that. Why? It's all summed up right here. Without stakeholder satisfaction, your project is a failure. Pretty harsh words. If you can deliver your project on time to the exact second, you can deliver your project on budget to the exact penny, but if the stakeholder is not satisfied, if the final product of your project that you deliver doesn't satisfy your stakeholder, your project is a failure. For example, you initiate a project to do X, and I don't care what X is, a specific business requirement your project was initiated for, and your project is going to take eight months. During the course of the eight months, the business conditions change. The organization no longer needs X as currently defined. The organization needs an X prime or maybe even a Y. That's what the stakeholder needs. That's what the business needs. If you simply stick to your guns and sort of says, well, we developed a project charter and we developed a project management plan and it says I'm going to deliver X, so I'm going to deliver X you're not doing your job as a project manager. If the stakeholder requirements change, you need to be flexible and adaptable to change with the stakeholder's requirements. That's not to say we change from X to X prime or from X to Y without documentation, without integrated change control, without adherence to all the project management principles that we know and love, 
but we need to satisfy the stakeholders. So we say, yes, stakeholder, I understand your business requirements has changed. I understand the economic environment has changed. I would be more than happy to change our project from X to X prime or from X to Y. Here is the impact. Here's the impact to the project scope. Here's the impact to the project time. Here's the impact to the project budget. If you would be happy to approve this, then I'm going to continue on the project. And if the stakeholder says, no, I can't approve that, there's no money, then you stop the current project. You need to ensure, where appropriate, the stakeholder's needs come first. As long as it's not ethical, as long as it is ethical, as long as it doesn't violate your project management professionalism, as long as you adhere to the terms and conditions as defined in the PMBOK guide, the scope, time, cost, quality, etc., as long as you execute integrated change control, it's critical to support the project stakeholders. Without stakeholder satisfaction, your project is a failure. This nugget has been focused on project management professionalism, ensuring that all of our actions as project managers during project delivery adheres to the PMI code of conduct. And that can be summed up as doing the right thing. And the right thing is defined in the PMBOK. That can be summed up as saying be ethical. Ensuring that you are doing things ethically as defined by the confines of your company, as defined by the confines of the culture, as defined by the confines of the country within which you are working. You need to be a professional. We need to ensure that we are taking the appropriate actions as project managers to ensure that the project management profession is seen as a true profession, that we are professional, we are ethical, and we do everything in our power to ensure our projects deliver successfully, to support our organization, and that people re review and respect the project management profession as a valued part of the business community, as a valued part for organizational success. This concludes our nugget on project management professionalism. I hope this video has been informative for you, and thank you very much for viewing.